When you get down to twining, you've either got to be using split cedar root or spruce root. And that, or cedar bark. Okay. Or maybe cherry bark. Maybe. Maybe cherry bark. And the stuff that's curled around looks like a cherry bark. It actually looks kind of like cherry bark. And after 500 years and yeah. water logging, but it's 2,000 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry, that's what this is. Well, we I was think thinking we're not sure. <laughs> yeah. We're not really sure. We've asked. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. So the big thing here, though, I just looked at this and I said, oh, I think this is spruce root. Yeah. This here came from the middle of the root. Uh -huh. They split off the edges, and they use these really nice finished edges for nicer, and I'm speaking northern coast, but here too, like the, you'll just find a preference for this outer shiny part. And then the inner part tends to be the strong more The outer part, and um, here you can see it's twined, and there's, the, it, there's actually a shine to it, and it's got this nice curve. And here, here's a good example, this piece. Yeah. And I really do work with a loom and a magnifying yeah. glass. I mean, yeah. I'm always looking at yeah. this level of detail. Um, but this is the inner root. This is inner root. And so this is how do they, root. how do they get stripped? Good question. So it, in the case of spruce root, and this is a well-established Tlingit and Haida technique. It doesn't look like they did it on this part of the coast. But what they, what they do up north is they um, get a fire going uh, pretty big, and then they take it down to the colas. Elderly weavers always involved, so it's just, it's all art. And you cook the spruce root over the colas, and then the, um, you draw it, it and, and when it's sizzling just perfectly and just the right sound and the right smell, you take it off the fire, and you draw it through a stick that has a slit in it, and you pull it through, and it takes the husk right off. Then you start taking, splitting it, one end in your mouth and the other end pulling. And you know you've got, you do whatever you can to get it this flat and straight, and then pull this off. Always monitoring how thick everything is. And then maybe you can get another, hopefully you can get a flat piece out of the middle or maybe two, depending on how big the root is. Here, and, and, then, and then you sort that. Here we're talking utility. They didn't hus take the husk off. I think it happened to fall off because here you've got the husk on it. So whether it, and here, right here. Right there you can see it, yeah. So they weren't worried about it. They just didn't even. Yeah, you can see how it's really woven into it. It, that's it. And yet, it's hard to believe that here it fell off later. So I think it just either worked itself off as it was, it was being woven or yeah. whatever. But they were not at all worried about whether the husk was on or not. And they also weren't worried about whether they used the inner root or outer root. But they were splitting roots. That's a big thing yeah. with this piece. The other thing is they were doing open twine here with two pieces. And then here they were using, and this is, these go over one, under one, over one, under one. So you just have two wrapped elements just, just here. as they go. Here, that's like another one of these decorations they have over. It is, and it's over two, and it's also three strand, three strand twining, because this one, goes there, and it's not this one, and it's not this one. So you've got at least three strands. And they're going over to under, looks like under one, because this one might be, maybe it is just two. It is, it could very well just be two. But it looks like this one is like, yeah, and then I'm gonna point her to it does look like this one just kind of fumbled, but it got in there. I think that might be that one. But see this tiny one yeah. coming out of there? Yeah. So this big one comes out here, and there's a little tiny yeah. one there, yeah. a big one here, a tiny one there, a big one here, and then it kind of... Yeah. Not... Mm, we're just... Mm -hmm. They're just sticking it in there. But then maybe this... But this... It's a... It, 
why is this down here? <laughs> if this is the bottom, why is there this decorative? Could this whole area here be the bottom? Maybe. That's what I think it is. Uh, Personally, uh, that was, that was my. So this is the, yeah. this is where it meets. So this <laughs> right. meets, and then that's the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just, just smushed. Right? It's just smushed. Okay. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> so they got to the bottom here, and they put this kind of structural. And then this is, is the butt carryover. So this is, is the just corner. the corner. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's why because the otherwise, if this was decorative, they would have been more. May, yeah, I just see this as we need a basket to to uh, strain these clams now, and Let's just wait. you just make it as fast as you can. How long does it take to make a basket? If if this basket is truly this big, and I'll, you could do it in less than a day so at this good. level of you know you can tell that they were in a hurry. And yeah, because each round would probably take. If she's really fast, she could do around in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You can leave. Sometimes in twining, what you have is you don't, you have two, usually what you have is two elements that are always like this. And so you have a consistent angle to the twine. What's unusual about this piece is that you do have a 2-2 two, two twine here, over 2, under 2, in both elements. So we'd say that's 2-2 two, two twining. However, next to it, and it's very hard to see because of the, the dirt and the different things going on, but you've got one piece that's clearly the same piece, and it is at different angles. So what that means is it is a row of braided twine. And that's where you've got warps, this, you know, so the weaver is like this with the warps, but she turns it, and she's braiding and twining it through at the same time. And that's where you end up with a chevron or a bird's foot or something like that. That's what this is. And then she goes back to twining, regular twining. But this, now we need to go back through and look and see if we have any other braided twining because this is what I'm seeing. So this is braided twining, which is another it's a okay. new technique. New technique, okay. So usually with twining, you're just this is regular twining here. Okay. The which, first one. So they're twisting and yeah, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna take my weavers and go over. Uh, I'm gonna go around the back and bring it through and to the back and around and bring it through and to the back, and so you end up with a consistent angle. That's okay. the first row. Okay. But with this next row, she has two, and she's bringing one over the front, the other over the front, and we never really see them cross in the same warp, so she's bringing one over two and the other around the back, but then she's bringing the other one at the other angle, so it's a braided, and you end up with a chevron or bird's foot type pattern. And that's why you've got this piece at these opposite angles. Mm -hmm. And so, what I love, you know, it's so fun to find consistency, and then what you find is, is this ability to not, it, the individual artistry and the invention of the weaver is what this is, mm -hmm. and that's exciting. Yeah, oh, it's amazing. And then she goes back, and so this so is So she's decorative. doing this, and then this, and then this, so there's yes, three elements. there's three rows. Okay. And I think this is the most decorative, intentionally decorative thing I've seen today. Yeah. yeah. And I still don't know what this is. <laughs> this is just not anything. I was still going to say this is cedar root. <laughs> <laughs>